Hello guys, can you see this? Or oh, I should make it bolder. So this is the offer letter of a subscriber from this YouTube channel. Her name is Grace. She got a fully funded PhD without a master's here in the UK at the University of Portsmouth with a generous stipend of over £18,000. And by the way, for Grace, I didn't review any of application documents. I didn't see her CV. Nothing from her. I just got an email from her saying, hey, I watched your video about this scholarship at this university and I applied and look at it. I got an interview and now I got the funding. So that is my technique usually. So I'll guide you, give you the information that you need, show you the documents you might need to put in place and how to make those documents. And you go on your way and do good things and win scholarships. Um, the good news here is, apart from the fact that Grace got the scholarship and she's now studying here in the UK, the good news is that there are several more scholarships at this university. So there is more where this came from. There are more opportunities where this came from. So today we'll be talking about the opportunities at the University of Portsmouth. So you can move directly from, um, uh, and from a BSc straight to a PhD. So that's the topic of today. But of course, the intro. So welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're joining us for the first time, where have you been? This is almost the end of December. Fortunately, there are lots of videos here you can still watch and go through to win yourself a scholarship. So it's not too late. So welcome and explore. Of course, if you're a returning subscriber, a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. And I hope you get a scholarship sooner than later. So as I said in the intro, we're looking at the scholarship at the University of Portsmouth. And by the way, compliments of the season. Happy holiday. If you're watching this in December, I hope you're relaxing. I hope you're enjoying with friends and family, but that you have one eye on scholarship opportunities as well, because time waits for no one, opportunities wait for no one. So let's move on. So we're looking at PhD scholarships here at Portsmouth University. And you might say, hey, I do not have a master's already. Um, why are you talking about um, PhDs? Well, Grace never had a master's before. She just applied straight from a BSc, straight to a PhD. So these, a number of these opportunities here, you can move directly from a BSc to a PhD. And these are the list of departments and what they are funding. I think you should pay particular attention to the deadlines. The different departments might have different deadlines. Let me show you what I mean. For instance, um, this is um, area studies. That's like politics, sociology, um, human geography, and the rest, studying particular regions um, of the world. So this is the scholarship for area studies. And these are the departments. And these are the different themes. It means these are the different area of research that this department is looking at. You can see area studies here. They look at decolonization, history, conflict, sociology and, sociology and theories and the rest of them. And they look at business management, criminology. And these are the different themes that these um, departments are looking at. And they also give you the names of the professors and what the professors are investigating. So it means if you're interested in applying to any of those departments, you have to pay attention to the area of interest. You might be required to join our, an already existing research or propose a research that aligns with the area of interest of these professors you're seeing here. So I hope that is clear. The information is already written there. I'm just giving a quick summary. You can sit on your own to like process the information and see how to um, apply. So let's go quickly to the applications requirements. So here you see this one plus 3.5. So the one here means a master's. The one there means a master's. Let me make my screen brighter. Why did 3.5 means a PhD? So it means if you do not have a master's already, you can apply for this one. Because with this, you get a master's and then the PhD. So it kill um, two birds with one stone, essentially. So you throw one stone and then you get both the master's and a PhD. And of course, if you have a master's already, you can go for this option, the plus three. So there's also this plus um, 4.5. I think you'd also go straight if you do not have a, um, um, what they call it, you also do not have a master's. 
So the applications requirements are also written here. A bachelor's degree from a UK institution or equivalent in other countries. Um, then the studentship is open for both UK, EU and international students. The English requirements, you need the IL 6.5. A number of you might panic and say, oh, I don't have the IELTS. We'll be looking at that shortly to look at the equivalent. That's the other exams you can take or the other qualifications you need um, without submitting the IELTS. So now they're asking for a research proposal. There's a video on my channel on how to write one. I'll put a link to that video in the description box of this, of this particular video. There's also a guide on how to write it. The applications requirements also written here. And pay attention to the deadline of this particular one. It's the 19th of January. And if you ask me, it's not too far away. Not too far away. Um, two, three weeks away from now. So please pay attention to this. So this is just for one of the um, subfields or one of the colleges, usually social sciences, management sciences. Of course, you can always go back here to look for other fields, like you can see biological sciences here. And of course, check for what they are funding. Check whether it's for international students or home students. You can see here, you can see funded for UK, EU international students. So that's good. The deadline is also the 19th of January. You can see the funding here, what it covers. Over 18,000, it's likely, likely going to increase for next year because every year the stipend for PhD students and even master's students as well, if you're in a master's scholarship, the stipends um, increase every year. So this is likely going to increase probably to close to 19 or closer to 19. And for people at this department, they also get, um, they also get, what do they call it, a thousand 500. So check very closely if the funding covers both international and home students. That's very important. Not all opportunities cover for both home and international students. And this was the one we looked at initially for area studies. Also take a look at the applications requirements, the deadlines and the funding. So the funding still says the 18,000, very likely going to increase as well. So you can see the different departments. So look around, it's a very long list of different departments. So what we can do now is to check for the English language requirements. So let me show you how to do it. Let's just go to the main page. Um, let's see. Let's go to the main page and see if we can find info on English language requirements. So let's go English language requirements so the reason for this is just to um sort out that um ielts requirement or the rest of them so now we're on the english language requirement page can make this a little bit bolder as well so you see and get a clearer view of what it's all about so they mentioned these traditional exams like the IELTS or the TOEFL and the rest of them. But as we often say here, these exams are expensive. They take time to prepare for. A number of people from developing countries cannot afford these exams. So what do we do? So there are a number of exemptions from people from certain countries. It's a very short list here, not long at all. There are several other countries speaking English um, as either the official language or language of study that are not on this list. So what do we do? Let's scroll down a little bit more and see alternative English language qualifications. So this would work. So let's go to the continent of Africa. So these are the different exams you can write in lieu for the IELTS or the TOEFL. So Botswana, this is the, if you're from Botswana, this is the course or the grade you have to get in your secondary school certification. And um, let me go straight to Nigeria, where I'm from. So for Nigeria, you need the seniors, senior school certific certificate examination. That's the SSC or the NECO. I need to get a grade C6 or above in English language. So with NECO, um, scratch card to verify your results. And um, those who have taken this exam, they know what this means. So. So check for your own country of origin, of course. So this is for Africans, and you can always check for Asians and the rest of 
the world for indians by the way you're doing this this exam so look around you might just find um the alternative certification that will prevent you from writing the ielts or the toefl and then um, go straight away attach that exam or that result to one of your applications so you've seen that there are several departments here with probably different requirements some might expect you to write um, a proposal some might require you to write a supervisor so just check for your own department so whether it's politics whether it's law whether it's um, civil engineering for some of them you already have like a topic as you can see here there's already a topic here so it means the um, the supervisor has already found the topic what you only do is to show that you have like a basic knowledge about the topic and you have the background sufficient interest as well in this topic to undertake this research so quickly before we go as you see on this offer letter that was um awarded this year actually it was it came in um the middle of the year and this student is starting or has, has already started actually in october this year there is already a topic here something about plastic economy so it means probably when the student was applying there was already a topic she just had to show that she had like a background interest already and maybe a, a bit of method training already in this area of research and pitch ourselves to this supervisor so you might be doing something similar as well here i'll put lots of videos in the description box of this particular video on how to write a cv how to write a proposal if you have to do one and how to contact a professor some of these scholarships may also require to contact a professor beforehand and when you contact a professor what do you do you tell them about your academic background your academic interests your skills and how you want to work with them and how you're a good person to work with essentially so i'll put a link to that video in the description box and um, so you can watch watch it to um, assist your application so i hope this was useful guys fully funded um actually phd but you can move directly from a bsc to a phd fully funded over eighteen thousand in stipend your tuition is covered and as we saw together you can get your english test waived by looking for alternative certification alternative ac academic qualifications accepted in lieu for the ielts or the toefl so as usual guys we cannot wait to celebrate you so get to work 2024 is just around the corner i want it to be your year of academic breakthrough so just follow the instructions here you'll be fine explore the different opportunities and i will see you at the top sooner than later Bye-bye for now and enjoy the rest of your holiday. Cheers.